Greetings, fine people of the banjo. Today, I've got a great song to teach you. Uh, Man of Constant Sorrow. Everybody loves it. It's super simple. It's a perfect song to learn. Great one to learn early on in your banjo playing journey. Song that was made popular by uh, the movie Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, but a song that has been around for much, much longer than that. Uh, maybe the Stanley Brothers version was the one people knew the most prior to that movie. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the process of learning how to play that song on the banjo. We'll review a few different versions in tablature, but more importantly, I'll be demonstrating kind of the process for how I recommend going about learning any song on the banjo so that not only do you learn a new song, but you build critical skills along the way. I think that by and large, learning songs are the best way to develop your skills on the banjo, but yeah, whether that happens or not depends entirely on the process you use uh, to do that. So I'll be modeling that. We'll be going basically through four different steps that I'd recommend you do, like I've done in prior uh, tutorial videos. Okay, first things first, uh, let's get in tune. We're gonna be in standard G tuning, so D on our fourth string, G on our third, B on our second, D on our first, G on our fifth. All right, and for this song, we need three chords, our one, four, and five chord, which are in this key, the G major, the C major, and the D major. G major, we can just use our open strings. C major, or our four chord. And then D major, this is our fully fingered version, which is our five chord, uh, the, or the partial D. All right, super simple chord progression, okay? Starts on the one, the G chord. I am a man of constant. Move to the four, the C. Sorrow, I've seen. Go to the D, the five chord. Trouble all my, back to the one. Days. That's it. That's the whole chord progression for the whole song. I bid farewell, L to O can see. Tucky, the place where D, I was born and G raised. Now, um, in the movie version, you may remember there's a little refrain. The place where he was born and raised, where the backup singers sing along. That wasn't in the original Stanley Brothers version, but if you want to add that, all you do is go to the D chord uh, again. The place where he was born and then back to the one. Okay, so those are our chords, right? Super simple, but this is an incredibly popular song. Evidence, yet again, for you don't have to be fancy to make great music. Okay, let's now find our melody notes, right? Um, we have, I am a man. So those are. And that first note on the open first string, of course, is also present on the third fret of the second string. We can get it there. In fact, when we play this, we'll be oftentimes getting that note there so we can slide into it or hammer on. So, I am a man of constant sorrow. Okay, next part. I've seen trouble bull all my days. Okay, get those blue notes in there, which is the third fret. Uh, third string, third fret, fourth string. I am a man of constant sorrow. I've seen trouble all my days. That's it for the melody. That just cycles over and over with different lyrics, right? 
Okay, now we found our chords, we found our melody. Those are our first two steps. Now let's dress it up with some decorations to make it sound like a banjo song, all right? And so we're gonna start here with a two finger thumb lead version for our first break. And you'll see here that I've highlighted the uh, melody notes that are bolded and enlarged there. Um, so you can see where those fall and notice that most of the notes we're now gonna be playing on our banjo are not melody notes, which is very typical of the banjo. And that's what's gonna make this now sound like a banjo song. So I'll play through this first real quick. So walk it through step by step. Again, we're gonna slide into that first melody note or hammer on either one. Um, and, and this first measure sounds like this. Okay. Next measure. Again. All right, those first two measures all together. All right, now, next measure. Next measure. That last uh, note there is you have a pinch on the open third and first string. Okay, so, so far, here's what we've got. Moving to our C chord, sorrow. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Next measure. So those two measures of C sound like this again. Now we're gonna move into the D chord. That measure sounds like this. Okay. Same as our first measure. And the next measure. So a series of hammer on, a hammer on and then two pull offs. So it starts here and then. All right, so those two measures of D. And then we're done here with our, this last note. And we just have two measures of filler. Okay, so all together. And then we could just keep going if we want to. That's the two finger thumb lead. And now here is a three finger version. So our first measure sounds like this. Next measure. So we're syncopating those two, no two melody notes there. So those first two measures sound like this. All right, now, uh, here's an alternate way if you wanted to play these first two measures. Instead of starting with that uh, first measure with the way we played it before, we can do what you might call the Foggy Mountain uh, Lick. Uh, which is class, which is how Earl Scruggs began Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Okay, that's the first measure again. Next measure. So we're again, we're doing those forward rolls, syncopating this in an entirely different way. All right, so those two measures. All right. Now, next measure. Okay, again. Next measure. So we're throwing in two pinches there, one here, and sliding into the fourth string when we do that. And then 
doing a pull off after that second pinch. So that whole measure again. All right, all four measures so far. Moving to our C chord. Again. Next measure, we're continuing that forward roll. Again. All right, so those two measures of C, to probably make more sense played together. Now we're moving to our two measures of D. Okay, again. Last measure, same as the one from our two finger version. All right, and then close. That's our last note, we just have filler now. Do whatever we want. Okay, so played with the first way I showed the first two measures, the whole thing sounds like this. Okay, and now the second way sounds like this. All right, so there are a few ways in which you can take the raw ingredients, your chord progression, your melody notes, and then decorate around it with to make it uh, sound like a banjo song. And of course, there are many, many, many other options. These are just, these are just a couple of ideas to show you how it works. Uh, so feel free to learn these. Feel free to make ones up of your own. But also remember to not forget the fourth step, which is to make sure you then play it in context. So um, first, you know, if you need to get it under your fingers with playing with like a metronome or a drum track, do that, and then move on to playing it along with the jam track. And of course, um, as I mentioned, I recently created a Brain Joe jam track for this song. So you can head over to that when you're ready and start jamming along. And now to give you an example of what we've just covered sounds, sounds like uh, when played along with the backing track, I'll demonstrate that for you. Here we go. Help me. 